So um, if we are two presentations to show you real quick, one basically is process wiring, and the other one is kind of a little bit of update, which has got some parts that I want to show you that um, a lot of people aren't quite aware of some of the things we do when it comes to process wiring and just an update on hazardous areas. So for those that know Turk, um, we basically, uh, we can play in any industry there is. One of the biggest things we can do, obviously, is quick disconnect, custom cords, et cetera. But um, process wiring is something that we do a lot of in all the industries. And typically in a lot of the process industries, it's the same instrumentation. It's really what's in the pipe in a lot of cases that changes and differs. So basically, this presentation, I'll just touch on kind of why we do it, how we do it. And then I want to just kind of go through some applications and images to give you a better understanding, perhaps for those that aren't um, fully aware of what we do. So with that in mind, basically when, we've, when we talk about process wiring, um, we've been doing factory wiring for decades. Uh, we make around 200,000 cord set products a week for the North American market and we ship internationally. In the process world, and especially when we start to get into hazardous areas, div two or zones and things like that, one of the biggest things we can do for our customer base, and again, doesn't matter the industry, um, I've worked through all of it over the years. So that's been kind of a neat thing dealing with all the different um, industries out there. But basically what we're doing is where we can replace conduit, pipe and wire, flexible conduit, and we can eliminate poured seals in both division one and division two areas with plug and play cord sets. So our cord sets, um, basically, when we talk process, we're talking twisted pair, for the most part, twisted pair shielded cables. You know, what we can eliminate, and some of the main key features here by doing this, obviously we can eliminate water condensation building up in conduit and fittings and boxes and instruments by doing this. Um, in proper grounding of cables and shields, we can provide a ground wire. Typically we don't put a shield wire or a drain in the instrument because that's usually floating. We can. So we can eliminate any of that guesswork with our receptacles at the panel or at the um, device end. So one of the huge things that we can do, and this is especially in the northern states, I've seen a lot of this in North Dakota where it gets pretty brutal, um, but poor unsafe seals. We can now basically eliminate this, the way we construct and mould our cable our moulded plug body here, in some cases an epoxy filled plug body here, that becomes our poured seal. That's our mechanical barrier there. And we use gas block cables so I don't have gases running back down my conduit, back to my panel, creating an unsafe condition. So a lot of things we can eliminate. A lot of this time now can be spent pre-wiring instruments in the office or in the lab or the shop, and I can take them out to the job site with a box of cords and boxes and basically eliminate this. So we can solve a lot of problems by doing quick disconnect. Typically, um, when we start to get into hazardous areas, and basically we use the same cords, our process cords, whether it's non-classified, division one or division um, two. Division one, we're typically doing intrinsic safety. We've got some other options, we'll touch on that. But typically connectors that don't require the use of a tool to disconnect are normally arcing. So therefore not really allowed in a hazardous area. And per code, You've got to be tool, tool removable in a division two um, environment. And basically, we get around that, or we, we accomplish that with, with what we call our lock fast. I kind of touched on this. The way we make our cables, this becomes our poured seal here. And with a gas block cable, basically, I can run back into my non-hazardous area. With our lock fast guides, um, lock fast, connectors here basically. This is a clamshell. Some of you I'm sure are aware of this have seen this. But once we've connected our cord set to our receptacle on the device or our bulkhead, um, we basically put this nylon lock fast on here. It snaps shut. I need a screwdriver to then remove that. Hence now I'm, I'm tool removable in the division two um, or a zone two location. And like I said, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth about all that in division one. We can do quick disconnect if we're doing using intrinsically safe wiring methods. I don't need to lock fast because typically with our barriers in division one, I can't create a spark to create an explosion in the area. So I can work on that hot. Just a simple layout. So a lot of what we do, it's plug and play. 
its devices, receptacles, back to junction boxes, back to our, our barriers or division two. Obviously we're doing something different there without barriers. Our products, um, typically what I'm doing, like I said, most of my time is oil and gas. Most of my time is spent outdoors, but we do do pharmaceutical. We are doing chemical food beverage um, across the board. So we do have our mini fast cords, which are the larger cord sets. We do have our Eurofast, which are M12. Um, and junction boxes, we have conduit adapters. We have some M23 cords. We have some Div 1 to Div 2, I'll show a bit later. But typically, we also have a, a stocking program for the process industry. And that really was driven by the oil and gas. Um, we need to be, we need a product, we need it available all the time. And I'm, I don't know why that did that. I apologize for that. Um, so what we do in this case, basically, we focus on the mini fast for the most part. The minute I get into um, situations where I need um, more than one pair or two pairs, it's hard to do an M12. So the mini fast is kind of what we standardize and focus on with, um, with our process cords. We have cords that um, are ATEX and IECEX for zone two. So if anybody's doing offshore work or um, exporting, we have these cords and connectors. Basically, these have a metal back shell, it's a stainless back shell, and these are epoxy filled in the back side. Um, for ATEX and ICEX, there's a few more requirements where we can't use a molded plug body. I actually do a lot of this on wellheads in North Dakota um, because they are rugged. So with applications, basically here's where we can help you. And it's easy for us to come and perhaps take a look at what you're doing, send us some pictures, send us some drawings, and we can pretty much use a pretty small bill of material to accomplish most things that are done in the field, regardless of the industry. Um, and I'll go through some pictures here and kind of step through this and give you some ideas. A lot of these pictures are mine or they've been sent to me. Um, they're file photos that we use. This is basically as an application, um, obviously, oil well in North Dakota, it looks pretty, um, pretty run down and beat, but this really wasn't that old. So it's quite easy to look at what we've got in a Div 1 area here, the Div 2 area, and come up with bills and materials. We can help you with, with simple guides like this. This basically is a typical um, tank installation. We're in, a, in the red um, bubble here, I've got a Div 1 area, and everything else outside is Div 2. This was, this was first done, I did this with a oil gas producer where everything was conduit and wire. And one of the big questions with this was, you know, it's going to be a lot of parts, so a lot of concern about that. Typically, what we ended up here is basically with this install, I've got seven part numbers. Um, so very few part numbers where the instruments can be pre-wired in the shop. We have um, level transmitters and a level switch. In the red bubble here, I'm actually using a cable that we've got that's a Division One to a Division Two cord where we have a port seal done in the factory in, in Minnesota. So I can get out of my, um, with EX instruments here, out of my Div 1 bubble into Div 2 to a junction box. And this customer has been doing this for years. And the only thing that changes is their home run cable back to their panel, which is basically this cable here. So they were quite impressed and actually surprised that we're talking so few part numbers. I use these same part numbers across the country with different customers, no matter what the um, industry. Just another example. Um, we've got some new field wirables here that basically have a half 14 inch thread. I can fit my wires off in here and this is designed basically for things like ASCO solenoid valves and I'll show that a little bit later. So once again, um, very few part numbers to accomplish this job. And again, some of the same part, part numbers that I use repeatedly. This is just another application of a Division II um, tank battery here. Basically here, we don't have a Div 1 bubble. And again, I've pre-wired my transmitter with a receptacle, got my cord box. So again, very few part numbers to accomplish the same, um, the same goal here and replace conduit and wire. Our cables are all exposed, run direct very rated cables. And these are rated for minus 60 degrees C, cold bend, minus 40 impact. Here's an example of um, the heavy duty mini fast, we call it. 
this is actually Atlas Copco that was shipping to Russia. So we needed to have IEC EX approved um, cord sets on here. We do a lot of customs at Turk and, and oddball things um, where we get requests. One nice thing with this particular connector, this is epoxy fill, so this isn't molded. So it actually gives us the ability to take cables that we could never really adhere to in a mold process real well and put them into something like this. I just worked with a customer uh, a couple of weeks ago that has um, flexible um, stainless steel RTD cables and not something you could mold to real well. So we looked at, well, we could just put the stainless cable into here and we can epoxy that with this connector, problem solved. Just another example, this is intrinsically safe application and intrinsic safety is really the only internationally recognized way of um, preventing explosions. And if you use blue cable, you do not have to label it as intrinsically safe wiring. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing and hearing more and more for requests for ethernet in a Div2 location. So we do do um, division two ethernet. We use M12s. It's a little bit hard to see, but this is an M12 fitting here with an RJ45 on the inside of the transmitter. So everything's plug and play. We do have different cable colors, jackets. Um, this is obviously, this is a non-hazardous area here. I don't have any lock fast here. They're using yellow. We do a lot of oil and gas, not only here in the US, but worldwide too. And so we can basically make life easier at the wellhead and instrumentation. You can see the lock collars on here. So I'm all division two. And again, this all pre-wired, like I said, exposed run direct buried cables. Everything is buried on these job sites. Here's an eight port box that basically everything's connected to um, our box and run back to, to the panel. Um, for those not in oil and gas, basically at some point, maintenance has to be done on wellheads. And previously, if this is hardwired with, with conduit or with flexible conduit fittings, work over crews traditionally, um, their skill level and obviously it's not their concern so things will just basically get cut off once they're done with their maintenance somebody's got to come back electricians have got to come back and rewire everything so this saves almost all of the problems we do have some div one cables basically um this just shows this this is actually this is probably minus 40 wind chill this day when we were helping put these in but basically this is a Div 1 location here, and I've got a poured seal in this fitting here that we do in the factory in Minnesota. So we've got two versions, one with a MCHL cable, and we have now a new um, high voltage flexible cable that achieves the same thing. This was very cold that day, so things were breaking off, the covers were breaking off instruments. Um, so now, basically with the union here, we could pop that in, fit off my wires and done. No seals to pour. Um, so hence saving a lot more time in the field. This is just another version of that. Basically the same thing, different application. In this case, a contractor here, he's still running his pipe up along the walkway, but he's using these as a whip to his transmitters. So again, I have a poured seal in here and here um, on this MCHL cable. Here's some gas, some gas wells actually in Michigan. We've spent quite a bit of time um, actually DTE or Detroit Edison basically. We've done a lot with them in power stations, but also in oil and gas. And this is um, actually Trans Canada pipe, pipelines and um, gas cabins. Again, four port box, they're using Armafast. We have a product called Armafast. It's basically seal type or anaconda where we mold our plug body on the end. So it's the aluminum corrugated on the inside and basically gives extra protection and in this case, um, specs being driven out of Canada for here. They have problems with um, porcupines here, so they use the armor fast here for some added protection. Typically not necessary um, with our exposed run cables, but um, that's their spec, so uh, that's what they do there. You can see here we've got we have junction box um, brackets. This is for the four port bolted here to to a pipe. Just makes mounting a lot easier and simple too. Intrinsic safety, a couple of applications here or examples. You know, our cables can be run in tray as opposed to conduit. Um, with exposed run cables, we can clip them under beams. We can, as long as they're mechanically protected. This picture here, they've actually used a lock fast. And for two reasons, I'm not sure why they did that. 
maybe they didn't want someone tampering with that or perhaps they didn't understand and put a lock fast on there um, anyway, but not necessary. It's another application here, division two application. Um, outside of the bund here, we're using barriers here. We're doing intrinsic safety. Uh, this is continental resources actually. So everything plug and play and they're in the process of wiring this up. This is an application here for um, portable salt water tanks. They would basically, we've got a few companies that we work with in North Dakota where they're, everything's still the infrastructure isn't there. So a lot of products got to be roads, um, hauled out by road, whether it's salt water, whether it's oil. And in this case, this particular customer here, um, he rents out mobile tanks, but he still needed to do level on his tanks. And that's a bit hard to wire those up and do it safe and legal with conduit. So everything here, plug and play in a couple of A-frames, we can basically, he can pack up his two frames and still do his level. In this case, he had three tanks set up here running with, um, with quick disconnect, again, saving him a lot of time. This is another example of our armor fast where we've molded basically to the seal tight. Um, instead of glands and worrying about, are we sealed? Um, are we effective here? Basically, I've got my molded cord set here, so my, my barrier is here. Again, it's all armor fast. This was, um, this was actually a Hess oil job. We have eight port boxes up here. Wasn't allowed up here that day because of um, H2S gas. So in a lot of cases I'm dealing with, not only are we saving time and money on install, but we're also saving people from being exposed to the elements. Um, so for their human safety. Again, similar sort of cables here with our armor fast, basically laying across the ground. And interesting with this particular site, when oil was $100 a barrel, this one site was a million dollars a day. They had 10 pump jacks here, um, five pumping, five free flowing. So um, at a million dollars a day, when we can save them not only hours, but days of install at a million dollars a day, that's a huge savings, not only on startup, but if I've got to replace something here now, I'm just disconnecting it and putting something back on. So the time then is really taken up with the mechanical connection. We do um, power fast. So I can do up to 30 amps, basically quick disconnect in the class one div two environment. Here we've got a bigger connector here, bigger size cable running some row torque um, actuators. Same install, these are treated buildings. So again, we've replaced all the hard wiring with plug and play cord sets. In this case too, this is actually XTO, um, we have crimped, they're using uh, crimp seals on their lock fast connectors here. So they know if somebody's been in there tampering, but um, never really heard of any cases of that. And these are pretty remote locations. Multi-pin connectors here, I've got some 10-pin. Um, cord, set, cord sets here on actuators. Again, this is North Dakota. It was like stones being thrown in your face this day. So this stuff lives in very harsh environments. We do this worldwide. Um, a lot of the contractors here, a lot of the company, companies here, a lot of their uh, personnel have come from Alaska too. And um, I was out there not well, years ago and I come across a contract who just came from Alaska and he said, this is worse. So uh, you have to chuckle. We do do other products, obviously. We have network products and sensors and um, HMIs, everything. Um, in the process industries, we do a lot of valve sensing. So here, just some valve sensors that we can adapt to pneumatics or to our pipes. We actually have versions that have the feed through here. So I can also fire my solenoid valve um, through the same cable with an extra port on our um, solid state switches here for valves. More of those, you can see there's, there's a lot of that used on these skids. Just more examples of skids where now, basic with some basket tray, we can um, very quickly and easily throw some things together. Just some plumb cables here on some skids. There are eight port boxes. So anytime we've got to build something, ship it, put it back together, quick disconnect makes a lot of sense. This again is some of our armor fast cables here with some added protection. And these are basically um, proximity sensors that Turk have that basically replace ghost switches on mechanical um, manual valves, gate valves for feedback. Just another angle of that, another view of that. 
some more pictures here getting back into the panel we can either run our cables straight through in the panel or i can provide bulkheads here i've done quite a lot of work where basically we'll put receptacles on the panel and have our cables so that when it's time to ship something if i've got separate panels um, we can basically lock the cabinet we can have everything running in the shop lock the cabinet ship it and have cables attached at, at the job sites um, we've been very successful doing that just some more options here more skids so we live in all the all the environments we do have obviously network cables for all the different bus networks whether it's foundation field bus profi bus ethernet um, we do all the bus media networks this is actually a division two location here but this is a short circuit um, box so i don't need my lock fast on here because i'm limiting the current going out of here but i do have lock fast um, covers here on my trunk and my terminator so foundation field bus another example of foundation field bus this is actually in hitting minnesota taconite mill where i was asked to go and take a look at apparently cord turk cord sets that weren't working when had a look, there was nothing wrong with cord sets, but the customer actually had water hammer that was taking out um, diaphragms and pressure transmitters. This is a pretty old install. So, you know, the stuff lasts pretty well. Our mini fast, well, I should say, lasts really well. Our mini fast cords, we have spring bushings in the female cords, and they're also, the pins are gold-plated pins. So um, we can, you know, handle vibration and, um, all sorts of applications like that. And it's also a cork and bottle seal, so very watertight. Intrinsically safe, more applications, same sort of thing. Um, this is one that I worked on. I used to do it quite a lot in Australia for Turk. And this was actually in Australia, and this was offshore equipment where the customer was making his own connectors here on his instruments. And he was getting, frustrated because they just weren't working and everyone he picked up to show me everything was loose so nothing was sealed nothing was watertight so basically we replaced all this with our with the st same sort of product as i use with everybody else problem goes away this is a, a customer that i have in michigan spent quite a bit of time with them um, this is actually food and beverage industry and again we've basically converted everything from conju to plug and play cord sets. Again, we see a lot of the same instruments, um, same devices, pressure, flow, temperature. I use the same product here as I use on wellheads in North Dakota. So again, it's really, I've had customers see these pictures and whose gasket is that? Like, no, this is food and beverage. Again, really the same, same instrumentation, same product. It's really what's in the pipe that's different. One thing I wanna to touch on this, um, this was actually done for Ecolab, the first one. And like most customers who first sort of get into this, um, there's apprehension and questions and how does it work? And there's perhaps a little bit of a learning curve. There was a bit of a learning curve here because there was a lot that went into these. But when I went back and visited them <clears throat> about three months after they did this, <coughs> excuse me, they shipped this first skid. They did a bunch of these and there was an identical skid to this that actually went to Germany. So the two engineers went over to commission the skid. They went to start it up, didn't work. Um, it basically started and stopped. What they found, they had a piece of um, stainless pipe in the backyard on the pipe rack, put it all together. When they went to commission it, it failed. So the custom, custom made them pull everything apart to inspect everything. What they found, there was a dead mouse in the pipe. It ran into the Coriolis meter, basically, um, things came to a stop so they're able to clean it out but they said we are solved and we're they haven't changed because they were able to pull everything apart put it all back together in two days as opposed to they said probably two to three weeks if it was all hardwired it would have taken forever to pull that apart and put it back together so i'm very happy and we see that same sort of response as i mentioned we do a lot of custom stuff with turk too we're a little bit more limited in custom things when we get to hazardous area stuff because of approvals. But just as, a, as an example, this, this is a custom one that worked out well. Spending a lot of time in North Dakota, in North Dakota had a customer, their, their um, load cell cables here were breaking. So we come up with a new version for them. Typically with a load cell cable, and you can see it here, there's a 50,000 pound load cell here that measures the weight of the sucker rod. So it's measuring the, 
the salt water. It's measuring the oil, which then basically provides feedback to the panel that drives the, the drive to basically keep a steady, most efficient um, pumping at the well. Well, in North Dakota, especially the wind blows so much that these cables traditionally will break internally or depending on the pump jack, the wind blows wrap around the, um, the counterweights here and snap the cables. So that's a real problem where they've got to open the seal basically of the load cell, pull their cable all the way back. So we come up with a custom quick disconnect solution where now basically using a standard Turk receptacle um, and a union, we can now put our receptacle in there, it never has to be broken um, apart again. And I have, this is just one version, but the majority that we sell now, we have a plug on each end. So now when the wind blows and this breaks, I'm just replacing a coil just here, saving the customer a lot of time, a lot of money with a superior product. So we do do custom things. Um, saving time and money, you know, just a few examples. One of the first jobs I did, and actually was um, for an oil company in North Dakota, they went from 63 hours of hard wiring with explosion proof conduit and devices to 17 hours using quick disconnect. They switched from um, EX devices to intrinsic safety. They'd spent six hours in the shop pre-wiring all their transmitters, getting everything together. So basically they went from 63 hours to 11 hours on the job site. So not only time saving, but for them, um, the human safety side was huge and they've never, never gone back. And that's a typical example of what we see. Um, I worked with another customer up in North Dakota too that basically it would usually take him six hours to, to pipe and wire some instruments in treater buildings. Basically all he needed was male, female receptacles and six foot cords. And he was able to reduce that to 20 minutes. And when he first approached me, he was 40 jobs behind. So worked out very well for him. This is a recent one here that I've done in Michigan where the customer basically um, recently, they had 21 um, transfer station instrumentation installs to do. So other than getting the contractor on site, um, they did it themselves. They were able to do the 21 installs themselves for what it previously cost them to do one with the, with the contractor. Um, contractor not too happy obviously but um, the benefits are huge so that's kind of um, a little bit of an overview on the on the applications and things we can do and again it doesn't matter that really what the um, industry is we can do the same thing across all the industries so again the benefits and a lot of this I think you all probably realize you know we can save a lot of time save mistakes I no longer have seals to deal with I had a a company in North Dakota a few years back where they, when we came up with these division one cables, he stopped me one day and he said he was able to sleep at night because he knew his, his guys were not pouring seals correctly, especially in the winter months. Um, so huge savings. There was a contractor up there that thought pouring water in the seals in the winter time that sealed it and that was okay. And that's actually a true story. So we can eliminate a lot of that concern. We have a stocking program for, core group of products for the process industry, you know, quick replacements, human safety, um, and just safer all over. And all of our cords and connectors, you know, they are approved. So a lot of advantages to do that. And as I mentioned, really doesn't matter um, the industry. This is actually that um, million dollar a day um, site here where we were getting um, at hundred dollars a north well, We weren't, but the customer was. So huge savings for them. I'm going to change course here, jump on the next presentation real quick on here to show you some um, a few updates. So let me get out of that real quick. Hey, Mark, up can we grab a couple yep. of questions? I, yes. I got, I got a couple here. I just don't want to get... Yep, let's so, do that. Um, the first one we have is the cabinet had a that had the bulkheaded entry. Would it require yep. purging since so you even got exposed wires at the terminal box inside? Okay, I missed part of that. You broke up. Yeah, the picture that you had showed with the yes. uh, cabinet had the bulkheaded cable entry. Um, yeah. Question is, do require purging since you've got exposed wires at the terminal block? No, you don't because those cables are a gas block cable, so there's nothing coming in through that through that cable. Um, that a lot of those pictures there 
it's the panels could be in the safe area or if they're in the division two location then probably anything in that panel would be division two approved but it it would ne not necessarily have to be a purge panel we do do purge panels um typically they're in a division one area and then we look at doing purging in those panels to take it to a division two atmosphere inside or to a safe area inside but um most of what we do and see day to day is usually a safe area or division two so no we don't in those cases no need for purge okay and then uh, the next one here lastly is uh it's kind of a joint question so they want to know if the connectors effectively act as an explosion proof seal so it utilizes an explosion proof rating in class one div one and if there are yeah. any risk gases propagating up the cable yep so that's kind of a two-part answer there um and you can see on this slide here so here's we're talking about the receptacle we have two kinds of receptacles they look the same on the front end on the back end one's a bit longer and we use a different epoxy we have explosion proof receptacles that are basically a feed through and we can use those as quick disconnect in division one without ex receptacles in a class one division one installation quick disconnect only if we're doing intrinsic safety so that's the only way you can do QD in Div 1 is with intrinsic safety. And yes, I do have basically two forms of receptacles. I basically standardize on the EX across the board. A um, few dollars more and it eliminates those questions. But if I've got, a, say, an explosion proof transmitter in Div 1, I can do this with intrinsic safety. Um, otherwise, I've got another cable for that. Or if I'm in the Division 2 location, I can do this. Now, if my transmitter or device is rated as a division two device, I can use our standard process receptacle. Or if I've got an EX device that's in a division two area, I use the EX receptacle. That way our explosion proof or EX receptacle does maintain the integrity of the device. So, I, so the answer is yes, we can do that. But quick disconnect in division one, only if we're doing intrinsic safety. So a little bit long of a, um, answer there, but basically, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. All right. So, just to touch on a few updates here, because um, time is moving, I don't want to keep you longer than we have to. Um, there's just some cord set things here I want to kind of touch on more than anything. So, I'll run through these relatively quickly. Um, you know, we have added to a new family to our IS barriers for hazardous areas. They're, they're half the width. Um, we have a power bridge um, function with them too now new models with um with basically new temperature strain gauge things like that all of your basic signals whether it's um discrete um transmitters temperature um, we have control cabinet monitors this is a unique animal that basically will sense humidity temperature and if the door is left open um quite more quite a bit more use of this in the southern states with humidity if i've got a temperature sensitive panel I can put in one of our um, cabinet monitors here and basically we can program this if the door's left open, but also heat and temperature. This is just a little demo with some of our BL20 IO power supply where, um, and a H Turk HMI, where basically I can control a heater or a fan to keep a, um, a set temperature inside a panel. So kind of a unique thing. If we get into a lot of points of hazardous areas, we have our XCOM system. This is high density IO for instead of using a, a lot of barriers we can use a rack system we've got a new gateway here that is um multi-protocol ethernet based gateway instead of what we've had with profibus in the past we're just waiting for our north american approval on here but um the beauty with this in the process area i have redundancy on power supplies and redundancy on my gateway back to my dcs or plc so just to kind of touch on that the main thing here is, and basically a lot of these things we use packware and dtms which is freeware um, for those some of you are probably aware of packware others may not jumping back to some of the cables this is the this is our division one cable our exg cables we call them where those pictures of the mchl jackets in div one we have a flexible cable here where now i can either do daisy chaining in div one or i can go from div one to a div two area here and I've got a rotating coupling nut here and go to my junction box. We pour these seals, we do them in, in Minneapolis here um, at our factory in Plymouth. 
where basically this is a 6,000 psi poured epoxy seal here. It's a two-stage epoxy process. Um, where now basically I can offer it with or without unions. And now I have a 600 volt rated, um, two and a half thousand pound crush rated cable here. That is a class one division one rated cable where now I can do things like this in the field and not have to worry about people um, pouring seals and being done accurately. Heavy duty mini fast connectors, got all sorts of information. As I mentioned earlier, we're seeing more and more division two ethernet requirements. So we do all that. Um, and typically we're doing M12s outside the panel that we can convert to RJ45s on the inside. We also do type K thermocouples in the mini-fast line. So we have basically thermocouple wire. You can see the dissimilar pins here. So this is um, relative, uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, but um, type K thermocouples and quick disconnect. And it gives you a bit of an idea. Um, I mentioned this, we have an in-stock program for process cords. And the whole aim is to have stuff stocked in Minneapolis, actually between our warehouses, some of it's actually in Detroit and Michigan, which is closer. It focuses on our minus 60 degree ca um, cables. We, on the mini fast two, we also now have class two approval for our mini fast line. So we can now help those in um, with, with dusts and grains, where in the past you could only do intrinsically safe. So now we can do class two, division two with our mini fast line. We also now actually have hazardous, um, UL hazardous approval on our mini fast receptacles for panels and people that need UL approval on panels. We've got process wiring guides. We've even got low smoke halogen free cables. These are actually minus 70 degree rated. Um, this is more of an offshore application. So we do have some pretty rugged stuff. And again, you know, we support all the industries. We even have, I have junction boxes that are div to approve that have different pin configurations. Um, as an example, this one has eight wires here um, for actuators or um, with um, five PTs. I use same product, this one has a couple of six pins. I use the same product here as I use um, on food and beverage, as I use in oil and gas brackets. There's another view there of a junction box bracket. I mentioned these before, we have basically filled wirables now um, in M12 and minis where I can go into a valve or um, a solenoid, um, the M12, it's not div to approve, but our mini fast is stainless and non-stainless. And basically this is a before and after where traditionally, as an example with ASCO solenoids, we've got a couple of wires, three wires coming out of a out of epoxy seal here. We would have to join them to our receptacle with a conduit box or a coupling um, and basically splice our wires internally. Now I can use this here and I've got a quick disconnect um, solenoid valve and with our plug and play cables. I do have a, I am also responsible for our demo trailer. I've had it out there in Pittsburgh, um, in Pennsylvania, actually West Virginia, a few years back. I'm hoping to get back out there this this year if um, COVID lets up and Turk lets us hit the road again. So um, some new stuff in there and it works well by bringing stuff to you um, to give you an idea of more of the Turk products that we offer. But today really wanted to touch on some of the process wiring just to kind of give you an update. And um, that's kind of it. So I appreciate your time. If we've got some more questions and I don't think we've taken too much of your time.